Today, we're going to be learning this particular simple abstract looping animation that can be used in various situations. We're going to go step by step, keeping it extremely simple and explaining exactly what we're doing and why we're doing so that even a beginner at Blender can create this and use the techniques in their own animations. So let's find out how we're going to create it. In our default scene, the first thing that we're going to do is bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag up to create a new window and then change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor over here. Now we're going to press this button to add in a new geometry node tree and we're going to zoom in, select the group input and press X to delete it. Now the main idea that we're going to do is that we want a bunch of slices or slabs that are present, something like this. And then we're going to use some sort of a noise texture to actually get these slabs to get displaced. And that displaced slab is going to be animated to create the loop. Now the first thing that we have to figure out is how we're going to place these slabs. So since we're seeing that there are multiple slabs present in one single line, the easiest way to do it is by adding in a mesh line that's going to go something like this. And the line is going to be made up of multiple points as everything is in Blender. Now on each of these points, we're going to add in a slab, which is what's going to be the basis for our animation. So in geometry nodes, how we can add in this line is by going to the geometry node section and pressing shift A and searching for a mesh line node. Now we can plug this right into the group output and you see we get a line. Now the problem problem is that it's on the wrong axis and we don't have control over the number of points within this height. So to fix all of that, the first thing that we can do is change from offset to end points so that we can get a fixed length and play around with the number of points later on. Now we know that we want it to be on the Y axis. So we're going to change this end location from Z to Y. So we're going to select the Z, make it zero. And for the Y, maybe I'll go with two meters on the Y axis. And now you can see we have the line on the Y axis. However, currently there are 10 points that are making up this line, but I want even more. So I'm going to increase the count to something like 40. Now on each of these points, we can actually add in those slabs and the slabs are cuboids. So we can just add in a cube and then change the scale of the cube. So to add in a cube, we have to search for an instance on points node so that we can actually instance the cube or add in the cube to every single one of the points. So we can search for a cube and then plug the mesh into the instance socket of the instance on points. And now we have a cube added on every single one of the points on that line but the cubes are still whole cubes, but we want them to just be slabs. And we have this scale over here that we can play around with. So we want them to be reduced on the Y axis. So we'll just reduce this and keep shrinking it till we get a value that we like. So I think I'm actually liking a value of 0.02 and that's going to be my slab. However, the slabs don't have to be this tall on the Z axis. So I'm going to reduce this down to 0.3 and that should act as the basis of our animation. Next up, when we actually want to move these or displace them, you'll realize that we need to actually realize the instances. Well, first show what happens if we don't realize instances. If I want to actually move these around, we have to use a set position node so that we can set the position of whatever is present in the tree that we've created over here. So let's press shift A and search for a set position node and just plug that in. Now to actually move things around, we have to play with the offset value. So to move it randomly, we can just search for a noise texture as of now, but we'll play around with this in a while. So if we connect the color to the offset, you can see how every single slab is moving as a whole and each slab moves together. We don't have control over every single individual point of the slab. Instead, if I press shift A and search for a realize instances node and plug that in just before the set position, you can see every single vertex is moving independent of the rest of the slab. And that is exactly what we want. So with that, we can actually go ahead and add in some more geometry so that we get more points to be moved around by the noise texture. So to add in more geometry, we press shift A and search for a subdivide mesh node and plug that in after the realize instance node. Now, as we increase the levels, you can see that there's more and more geometry that's being moved around absolutely randomly using the noise texture. So maybe a level of five will do good. Now to actually see what we're doing, we'll not use the noise texture right now. We'll use a wave texture because that's what we're going to use to create the actual animation. So we'll press shift A and search for a wave texture node and plug this color into the offset. Now, the problem is that the wave is moving on all three of the axes. That's the X, Y and the Z axes. So, but we want it to move only on the Z axis. So to do that, we can do it in two ways. The first way is actually using a combined X, Y, Z node and keeping both the X value and the Y value at zero and plugging this into the Z and then plugging the vector into the offset. This way you can see the 
mo movement is happening only on the z axis and because the scale is so high we can't really tell the difference but if we start reducing the scale we can start seeing the actual wave like motion occurring only in the z axis however as you can see the wave effect is way too strong i don't want it to go this high i want it to be really subtle but we don't have control over that using the combined xyz method and instead we have to use a vector math node after this as well to actually control the height so instead of using the combined xyz node i'm going to press shift a and search for a vector math node directly and change it from add to multiply and then we're just going to multiply it by zero on the x and the y axis so that only the z value gets control over the z so now we can plug the color into the vector and the vector into the offset and if we start playing around with the z value you can see how we get control over the height and it's also happening only on the z axis so since i want it to be fairly subtle i'll maybe start off with a value really small maybe 0.05 and i might play around with it later but the first thing that i want to note is that the waves are currently occurring on the x axis but i actually want them to go on the y axis like this so i'm going to change it from x to y on the wave texture now the offset is what's going to help us animate or loop the animation so we'll play around with this a bit later but the first thing that we have to do is play around with the scale if we actually increase the scale too much we can't quite tell the wave effect of the node so we're gonna have to reduce the scale to something really small so that the wave nature is very prominent so i'll keep it at something like 0.8 next we want to actually add in that noise that we were seeing and to add this in all we have to do is plug the noise texture color into the vector of the wave texture now i feel like the noise texture is too large right now as in it's too chaotic so to make it a little smoother i just have to reduce the scale and i'll reduce it to maybe something like two and that just makes it a lot more subtle now the next thing that we have to do is actually make this much smoother right now we can actually tell every single face because it's not subdivided enough to increase the subdivisions all we have to do is press shift a and search for a subdivide mesh node and plug that in after the set position and that will smoothen things out even more but we still see the individual faces now you can increase the levels if your laptop can handle it and if you want to see how long it's taking to calculate you can always expand the overlays and switch on timings and you can see it's currently taking 1.5 seconds to calculate each frame and if i actually increase the levels to two it'll take exponentially more time so now it's taking three seconds to actually calculate it so i'm actually going to keep the levels down at one itself and instead i'm going to press shift a and search for a set shade smooth node and that way you won't be able to actually see the individual faces maybe just before the final render i'll increase the levels to two itself to make these jagged edges even smoother next up before we end with the geometry node section we need to actually assign it a material so we'll press shift a and search for a set material node and plug that in after the set shade smooth node and just select the default material that comes with the default cube because we're not using it for anything else now while creating all of the animation i don't want it to lag and take 1.3 seconds to calculate every frame so i'm just going to reduce the levels on the subdivide mesh to zero and even on the subdivision surface even lower and i also made another mistake which is instead of using a subdivide mesh to make it nice and smooth i should have used a subdivision surface node so i'm going to search for a subdivision surface node and plug that into the set shade smooth node so now if you actually increase the subdivide mesh to the five that it was and you look at a subdivision surface of level one it's actually fairly smooth so i might not need it to go to level two before the rendering however the edges are still slightly seen so i might increase it to two now i'm going to just reduce them for animation purposes to help prevent lag and now we can start off with setting up the scene followed by animation and then texturing to set up the scene we're going to go ahead and bring our view to something that seems nice just arbitrarily move it around and have it sort of zoomed in so i think something like this is nice and then i'm going to press ctrl alt zero on my numpad to snap camera to my view now i'm going to have to select the camera by selecting the outline over here or selecting it in the outliner over here and then go to the object properties and just play around with the location and the rotation so i'm actually going to rotate it a bit on the x-axis and the y-axis and just move it around till we position it in such a way such that we don't see this edge over here and we don't even see that edge out there so just stay with it till you get something that you're happy with so i think this is good enough because none of the borders are seen and it's a fairly nice distribution next i'm going to go to the camera properties over here go to the viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one so that i don't see anything outside my camera that will distract my animation next i'm going to set all of my defaults so i'm going to go to my render properties switch on ambient occlusion bloom and screen space reflections and for the ambient occlusion i'm going to increase the distance all the way to one and increase the factors to something like five i'm also going to change my viewport display 
okay from solid to rendered so that we can actually see the changes and i'm going to select the light and press delete to remove it because we don't need it finally i'm going to go to the world properties and then just change the color from this grayish color to a bright white and that's it for my scene setup next i'm going to actually do the animation so i'm going to select the cube once again and i'm going to increase the timeline quite a bit and i'll set all of the animation defaults so i'll go to my output properties change the frame rate to 30 frames per second change the end frame to 150 and the output folder can be wherever you want it to be file format is going to be ffmpeg video and for the encoding i'm going to change the container to mpeg4 with an output quality of perceptually lossless then if there are any keyframes already present you can just select all of them by pressing a and then pressing x to delete the keyframes then i'm going to press the back arrow to go to frame number zero hover over the phase offset of the wave texture and tap i then i'm going to go to frame 150 and change the phase offset to any even multiple of pi that means two star pi four star pi six star pi or so on in this particular situation i'm going to do two star pi and that's going to create one perfect loop so i'm going to hover over it and tap i and then i'm going to select the wave texture go down to the timeline and press t linear and that way we'll get a smooth looping animation that maintains a constant speed throughout the animation if you're seeing it a little choppy in this particular area that's because my editing cuts off the areas that i take time to speak or my laptop lags and things like that just so that it's faster for all of you but essentially it is a very smooth animation and you should get a very smooth loop and with that we can start off with the actual texturing followed by the final touches for the texturing we're going to change the geometry node editor to the shader editor and with the cube selected the default material should also pop up because we use the default mute. cube if you didn't use the default cube you can go to the material properties over here and just select the material from here if it's present if it's not press the plus button to add in a new material which i'll just demonstrate by removing the material and then you press this new button and then select material from the slot over here then you go to the principal bsdf and press shift a and search for a gradient texture and if you have node wrangler switched on you can just control shift click it to preview it and if you don't have it enabled you can just connect the color to the surface to actually see what the gradient looks like now i want the gradient to actually be present more towards the center so to get more control over the gradient texture i can press control t with the node wrangler switched on to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes again if you don't have node wrangler enabled just press shift a and search for a mapping node and shift a and search for a texture coordinate node and connect them up like this then we have to change from generated to object to get the gradient to come somewhere towards the middle like this after which we can play around with the rotations to just make the gradient go at an angle that you want so i actually want it to go a little bit more from the left towards the right rather than the top to bottom as it is right now so i'm going to play around with the rotation about the z axis to just reduce it like that so i'll go to a value of maybe minus 35 and then i have to play around with the x axis again to bring it in and i'm just going to keep playing around with it till i fine tune something that i like and that might not even be what i use in the final render so i will play around with this later on and you should too till you get something that you like next to actually get better colors than just black and white i'm going to press shift a and search for a color ramp node and plug that in right here then i'm going to connect the output of the color into the base color of the principal bsdf and connect the principal bsdf into the material output after that for the black i'm going to change it to maybe a yellowish color so something like this seems fine and then for the white i'm going to change it to a nice bluish color and since there's very little bluish color seen i'm going to drag the blue in and maybe play around with the location as well just to get some nice gradient contrast but once you're done with that you can always play around with the roughness and reduce it or increase it based on what you feel suits your animation the best in my case i'm going to keep the roughness down to zero and then start off with the final touches before the rendering for the final touches all i want to do is add in some depth of field so i'm going to have to select my camera go to the camera properties and check the depth of field option then i'm going to expand it and because we're actually very zoomed in if you actually look at the camera it's so close that it's actually cutting through the object which means we're very close and that's why the actual effect of the depth of field will be very very high so the first thing that we have to do is change the focus distance and we're going to keep reducing it till we get about the middle area in focus so somewhere around there is fine for me this middle region is now in focus and these edges are blurred out and i think that the edges are blurred out a little too much so i'm going to reduce or increase the f-stop to maybe 3.5 the more you increase the f-stop the lesser is going to be the effect of the depth of field if you reduce the f-stop down something like 0 0.1 you see the depth of field is way too much so play around with it to get what you like I think I'm going to go with a value of 3.5 itself. And with that, all you have to do is press render animation. Hopefully that video was slow enough 
for everybody to understand exactly why we did what we did so that they can implement it in your own animations. If you like that video, remember that I post videos every single day so you can check out other videos on my channel to learn so many more techniques that you can implement in your own animation workflow to create abstract or sci-fi loops and many other things just like that. Until the next video comes out, thank you so much for watching, keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.